Today, will you let Jesus set you free? He did not come to this earth to condemn you. He came to save you. He died on the cross because He loves you. And He deeply desires that your life be abundant and free. In John 8, 36, He states, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The title of this message is, Don't Cry. It's way too late. You made your decision on the other side of eternity. Don't cry. It's way too late. You made your decision on the other side of eternity. The living God of heaven and earth does not want you to wake up in hell when you leave this life. He wants you to go straight to heaven. He gives every man, woman, boy, and girl a choice as to whether or not they accept His Son Jesus or reject His Son Jesus. For some time now, you've been rejecting the inimitable call of the Holy Spirit upon your life to repent of your sins and give your heart to Jesus. I plead with you today with all that is within me. Eternity is way too long. Don't put your salvation off any longer. Let today be your date with destiny. The Lord Jesus loves you and He's waiting today for you with His arms open wide. Please, don't go to the place called hell and hear someone say to you, don't cry. It's way too late. You made your decision on the other side of eternity. Our text for this message is found in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you're tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they'll repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Would you pray with me? Father, in Christ's name, I praise your holy name that before the foundation of the world, you knew that we would be here today. Father, I'm aware of the assignment is before me. Empty me of myself and fill me with nothing but your powerful Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Father, may not one word leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Since the beginning of time, man has debated the existence of heaven and hell. He has also debated who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Jesus is very clear when speaking about heaven and hell in the Bible. John chapter 3, verse 3, he states most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is heaven. And Jesus told Nicodemus, a religious leader, that if he was not born again, he would not go to the place called heaven. To be born again means to repent of your sins and make Jesus your Lord and Savior by faith. To be born again means to be born from above. God transforms your heart. Have you ever made this decision? It is the greatest decision that you will ever make. We're all sinners, the Bible says in Romans 3.23. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we live without Christ in our life and we die, we'll live forever in the place called hell. 
If we repent of our sins and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior by faith and we lead this temporary life as we know it today, we'll live forever in the place called heaven. And you and I, as God cre created human beings, have the freedom to choose. We can accept Christ or we can reject Christ. What choice have you made? What choice will you make today? And the Bible says that to be born again, we must repent. Repent means to change your mind about your sins, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, and turn for your sins. The Bible says in Acts 3, 19, repent and be converted that your sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says to be born again, we must accept Christ by faith. Faith is believing even though we cannot see Him. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and for me that we don't deserve. And because of His love for you and for me that we do not deserve and our faith in Him, we can be saved. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. Only Jesus can save you today. And then to be born again, you must believe that Jesus lived in this life, he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb for three days. And after three days, God brought him back to life. That's called the resurrection. If you believe in the biblical and historical fact of the resurrection, the Bible says you can be saved. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Bible says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then to be born, born again, you must believe without a shadow of a doubt that Christ loves you and that He will never, ever reject you. He'll never turn His back on you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever, for whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus has never rejected anyone and He will not start with you today. Today, give your heart, give your life to the Lord Jesus. Heaven and hell are real places where real people live forever after they die in this temporary life as we know it today. The Bible tells us that heaven is a beautiful, glorious place of eternal bliss, for it is the city of God. In Luke chapter 23 in the Bible, we read the, the beautiful story of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. There were two men on each side of Him. One of them was railing against Him, cursing Him. The other man came to truly believe that Jesus who was who he was, the Son of God. And he said, Father, Lord, remember we, when you come into your kingdom with all the forgiveness, grace, and love, and the mercy of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus looked at him in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, and he said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. If Jesus says heaven is paradise, that's good enough. Everything is perfect. Everything is complete. For it is in heaven that we will be with the Lord Jesus and all of our family and friends have gone on before us forever. The Bible says in Revelation 21, verses 22 and 23, But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Who will be in heaven? Only one class of people. People who are born again. Who will be in hell? People who have rejected Christ. People who have never been born again. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20 verse 15, And anyone, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is hell. Hell is for unsaved people. Unsaved people are not in the Lamb's book of life. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life when you're saved. In Luke 16 verses 19 through 31 where we've read in our text for this message today. We've read the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man died and he went to hell, not because he was rich, but because he had never repented of his sins and made Jesus his Lord and Savior by faith. Hell became a reality in the rich man's life. When hell becomes a reality in your life, it will change your perspective on living. Life becomes real when you experience it. Dr. John MacArthur states in his book, The Gospel According to Jesus, and I quote, There will be many on that day who will stand before Him, meaning Jesus, stunned to learn 
They're not included in the kingdom. He goes on to say, I fear that multitudes who now fill church pews in the mainstream of the evangelical movement will be among those turned away because they did not do the will of the Father. End of quote. In Psalm chapter 9, verse 17, David states, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Two very important facts today. Number one, you're going to die one day. I'm going to die. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Secondly, when you die, you'll live forever in either heaven or hell. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell is filled with people who had good intentions to one day repent of their sins and ask Jesus to be their Lord and Savior by faith, but they waited too late. Approximately 2,811 people lost their lives on September the 11th, 2001 in the World Trade Center towers in New York City. This very day, this moment in time, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. Approximately 189 people lost their lives at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. on September 11, 2001. Today, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. Approximately 44 people lost their lives in a pasture field in the great state of Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. Today, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. I plead with you today, don't wait too late. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Hell is filled with people who had good intentions to one day repent of their sins and ask Christ to be their Lord and Savior by faith. But they waited too late. When you go to that place, I plead with you today, don't reach the point where someone will say to you in that place, don't cry, it's way too late. You made your decision on the other side of eternity. What did the rich man in the story that we've read today experience in hell? Well, in verses 23 and 24, we read he was in torments in a lake of fire. The Bible says, in being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes. He saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He wanted just one drop of water to cool his parched tongue. But it was too late. It was too late. In Matthew 25, 30, Jesus tells us that hell is a place of outer darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth. You'll not be able to see the tip of your finger at the end of your nose because the darkness is so black and thick. You cannot comprehend the agony and the torment of this place called hell. Paul Lee Tan states, and I quote, There's no way to describe hell. Nothing on earth can compare with it. No living person has any real idea of it. No madman in wildest flights of insanity ever beheld its horror. No man in delirium ever pictured a place so utterly terrible as this. No nightmare racing across a fevered mind ever produces a terror to match that of the mildest hell. No murder scene, he states, with splashed blood and oozing wound ever suggested a revulsion that could touch the borderlands of hell. End of quote. Are you going there? You've been putting the convicting power of the Holy Spirit on your life off for way too long. This could be your last opportunity to give your heart to Jesus today. Please, please don't go to this awful, dreadful place called hell and hear someone say to you, don't cry. It's way too late. 
You made your decision on the other side of eternity. You're still alive. You're still breathing. You can still think. You still have the capacity to know the difference between right and wrong. You still have time to repent and give your heart to Jesus. And then today the rich man experienced eternal separation from God and man in hell. The rich man experienced eternal separation from God and man in hell. We read in verse 26, And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. A gulf is a big wide gap. No one can get to you in hell, and you cannot get to anyone. Almighty God will never speak to you again when you die and go to hell. You'll be alive, conscious, and in full exercise of your mental and physical faculties, but in torment. Think about it. You'll never be convicted by the Holy Spirit to be born again when you're in hell. And then the rich man experienced panic in hell. He experienced panic in hell. Look at verses 27 and 28. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. He realized that hell is eternal. He realized there was no escape for him. He realized that his situation in hell was completely hopeless. And what did he do? He panicked. That's what you'll do. When you realize that you're there forever and ever and ever, you'll panic. I'm never going to get out of here. The rich man panicked. He knew that he had five brothers who were on their way to hell. Beg in this passage is translated pray. The rich man prayed urgently. He prayed earnestly that Lazarus go and witness to his spiritually lost brothers. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. And the rich man became even more desperate in his plea from hell. He said, if they see a man who has died telling them about hell, they'll repent. And Abraham said to him, if they'll not listen to Moses and the prophets, then a dead man will not be able to convince them of the reality of hell. My mother went to be with Jesus a number of years ago. And after she went to heaven, a hospice nurse came to speak with me. And she said, I saw your mother reaching out. I saw your mother say to you, I see mama and daddy over there. They're motioning for me to come on over there and be with them. She said, I, I saw what your mama was doing before she went to heaven. And she said, and I quote, I see death every day. She said, a few days ago I was in a home. This man was a very big man physically and he was just about to pass on. And he began to cry out, she said, and I quote, my feet are on fire. My feet are on fire. Please, somebody pull my feet out of that fire. End of quote. My mother saw where she was going. That big man saw where he was going. Sometimes God gives you a glimpse of where you're going. The living God of heaven and earth has no other plan for world redemption than what is before you right now. One of his messengers telling you what his holy and inerrant and infallible word has to say about this place called hell and who will be going there when they leave this temporary life as we know it today. If you go there, don't cry. If you go there, don't cry. You must know it's way too late because you made your decision on the other side of eternity. Time after time after time, the Holy Spirit convicted you. Time after time, He did all that He could, could do to convince you of the reality of hell. And you said, no, not today. I'll do this another time. I've got too much to do. I've got too much playing and partying I've got to do. And you've put it off and you've put it off and you've put it off. Do you believe that hell is a place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched? This is what Jesus says about hell in Mark 9, 48. You burn without burning up, and the thermostat is not turned down one single degree. In fact, in Luke chapter 12, verses 42 through 48, the Lord Jesus teaches that you'll be punished in hell according to the degree of evil that you've done. 
just as you will be rewarded in heaven for the good that you do after you're converted to faith in Christ. You cannot comprehend the agony and torment of hell today. But you must know it is a real place for real people who rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior by faith in this temporary life as we know it today. You're listening to this message today. You're watching today and you've become extremely uncomfortable. Your hands are sweaty. Your hands are sweaty. You have a lump in your throat. You feel like you're literally about to burst out into tears. You're not sick. It's called conviction from Almighty God. That word convince means to expose, to correct. The Holy Spirit is saying to you that you're out of fellowship with God, that you're not where you need to be, that you're apart from God, and that you need to get right with Him today. Today, not someday, but today. Today is the day for you to repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior by faith. In his book titled, Every Day with Jesus, pastor and evangelist Greg Laurie tells a story of three demons who were trying to figure out how to make Christians ineffective. One demon said, and I quote, let's tell them there's no hell, no possibility of punishment. That'll keep them quiet. The second demon disagreed with the first demon when he said, and I quote, oh no, Let's just tell them there's no heaven, no possibility of reward. End of quote. The third demon, he won the day with his suggestion when he said, and I quote, Okay, guys, let's not be theologically unsound here. Let's not tell them there's no heaven or no hell. Let's just tell them there's no hurry. End of quote. Hebrews 10, 30 and 31 says, For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God is merciful. He's loving. He's long-suffering. And he will hold out for people to come to him for years and years in repentance because he doesn't want to see anybody die here and live forever in the place called hell. Matthew 18, 14, Jesus states, Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. God does not want anyone to die and go to hell, but you must remember this. A time comes when God says, That's it. I've had enough. I've had enough. The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of His power when He comes in that day to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. When you die without Christ as your personal Savior, it is finished and finished forever. In hell, there is no higher court to which you may appeal. You will be doomed to burn forever and ever without hope, without sympathy, the Bible says even the love of God does not extend beyond the portals of hell. If you go there, I plead with you, don't cry. You must know it's way too late when you go there. You made your decision on the other side of eternity. Jim Elliott, great servant of Christ, faithful missionary, along with his friends, gave his life for his Lord on the mission field. And here's what he said in one of his journals, and I quote, When it comes your time to die, you better be sure that all you have left to do is die. End of quote. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to stand before Christ to give an accounting for your life? Matthew chapter 10, Jesus instructs the disciples on going out to proclaim the gospel. And he told them that everyone would not listen to them. And that for those who do not listen, he says, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for them. Do you know what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah? He torched it. 
Archaeologists tell us that they cannot find a trace of anything that that city ever existed. Don't cry when you go to this place called hell. Just know it's way too late that you made your decision on the other side of eternity. God loves you so much today. He's been waiting on you for some time. He has convicted you. He has sent witnesses into your life. And you have continued to reject His great love, His great offer of forgiveness and restoration. But today is your date with destiny. Today is the day for you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus right there where you are right now. You're broken over everything that's happened in your life right there. You just stop what you're doing right now and pray with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You've been instantaneously transformed by the power of God. You've gone from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You've gone from traveling the road that's paved to eternity in hell to traveling the road that's paved to a beautiful eternity in heaven. You're forgiven. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life where it will never, ever, ever be erased. Heaven is rejoicing, and I rejoice with the host of heaven that you've been born again today. I want you to write to me. Let me know of your decision. I have some materials that I want to send to you. And please, get involved in a good, balanced, Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. I look forward to seeing you in heaven one sweet day day. Live for Christ. He's worth it all. God bless you. I love you.